can my intuition be wrong? Not really, but let's cover why you might think that in this session. This is your moment. Did I make that up? Was that real? Did my intuition lie to me? Did my spiritual guides guide me in the wrong direction? These are very common questions. I have heard so many people ask these questions over the years. And if you've asked the questions, well, chances are good you have. You're not alone. When we step into using our intuition, we run into situations where things don't unfold the way we think they're going to unfold. We pick up an intuitive piece of information and then it goes awry or it goes wrong or it goes the wrong direction or it takes you in the wrong direction or it doesn't unfold the way you want it to unfold or how it said it would. Now, there's three main reasons why this can happen. And I'm hoping today, I'm going to go over all three of those reasons in this video. I'm hoping today by talking about this, it can help you to continue using your intuition. Don't shut it down. Don't turn away from it. And instead, when you come across a situation that you, you've used your intuition, you've listened to your intuition, and it didn't unfold the way you picked it up or it took you in a wrong direction, Hopefully when that situation happens again, because I hate to say it, it probably will. <laughs> when that situation happens again, you'll have these new concepts to look at to say, oh, I think it might've been this, or I think it might've been this, or I think it might've been this. And in the same teaching style that I always love to do, I'm going to give you kind of a what to do in each situation as well. So... You've picked up a piece of intuitive information. It came through as a sign or you heard it or you felt it or you sensed it and you decided to follow it. And then it didn't unfold the way that you hoped it would or that it showed that it would. Not even hoped, just you got the information. You said, oh, this is what's going to happen. And then that didn't happen. All right. Three things can happen here. Three things can be the cause of this. And the first one, it's it's pretty basic, I understand. But the first one is that you might have interpreted what came through differently. Or, you know, and I'm, see, I'm hesitating, because what I don't want to do is I don't want to say incorrectly, because there's no incorrect in this journey. This is a matter of learning and getting used to and being able to use intuition naturally. Guess what, if you haven't done that your entire life, if you weren't raised amongst people doing that, if it wasn't a natural part of your immediate circle or your culture, then this is new. You got to give yourself a break. You got to say, okay, well, I'm getting used to what it's like to use this. And sometimes intuition can come through and we can translate it. It's that translation that can get in the way. So the first thing that can happen here is translating something that comes through incorrectly. Oh, I hate that word. But you understand what I'm saying. Let's say you get an image of an elephant. You go, oh, it's the museum down the road. There's some elephants in front of the museum down the road. And then you go to the museum and things don't unfold. And you're like, my intuition lied to me. Well, this situation, it's more so that all you needed to do is remember elephant. That's it. And when you run down to the museum, because you think that's where it's all going to unfold for you, because that's where your intuition sent you then you actually didn't run into the actual elephant sign that you were supposed to run into to get you in the right direction. I know that, that can sound a little bit kind of <laughs> down this road, down that road, but the bottom line with this first reason why intuition might not unfold the way that you picked it up is that we need to, with intuition, just say what you see, feel, and hear. Translating it, you lose so much. So when a sign comes through from your guide or just from your intuition in general, from source, from you know loved ones, however you're tapping in organically for you, when a sign comes through and they show you an elephant, the best thing you can do is say, thank you for the sign. I will keep my eye out for that. But it's the second our brain 
wants to apply something to that or decide that it means something or say, this is it. Now I know that's the human in us. We want to know. We want the answer. Okay. So in this situation, when a message comes through, it, it could be a yes message, a no message, someone's name, an elephant, a, you know, a flower, a date. It could be anything. The best thing you can do is say, thank you for the message. I'm holding it close, meaning I will keep it near me. The worst thing you can do in that situation is try to figure it out. Because here's the thing, if you could have figured it out, <laughs> you don't really need your intuition. If you could have figured out that it was the museum and it was the museum, you would have already gone down there, right? But what we're doing is we're asking our intuition, our higher selves, our guides for signs and symbols to guide us in the right direction, which is a beautiful thing. This is how we should live naturally. But we take that symbol and sometimes we jump too quick to figure out what that symbol is. So the first thing that can kind of skew you know, the response and the outcome of an intuitive message is getting it and then applying a whole bunch of meaning to it. Okay, well, this is what came through. So it means this, 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 and this, right? Uh, if, if you see, you know, the symbol of like a birthday cake, just let it be a symbol of a birthday cake. If you feel like going in the, the, to the left instead of the right or forward two more blocks instead of turning, then just go with that. Instead, sometimes we'll stop the car. Let's use this analogy. You're driving and you're supposed to take a left because, you know, <laughs> the instructions are take a left in 500 feet. And all of a sudden your intuition says, you go, keep going forward, keep going forward, keep going forward. This is a moment where you should just keep going forward. Don't stop the car and try to figure out why. Okay, it's telling me to go forward because I do know that two blocks down there's a McDonald's and then there's two gas stations down there. And is there anyone I know that lives down there? Like the second we do that, right? The second we try to figure out exactly what it means, what the complete answer is right now, that's where we get off track. Instead of stopping the car and trying to figure out why the message came through and exactly what the outcome is going to be from this intuitive information coming through, you need to just follow with the flow. If an image of an elephant comes in, you need to say, thank you for that image. I will hold it close to me and then go about your day. If you feel like going forward a few more blocks instead of taking a turn, then just go forward a few more blocks before, you know, trying to process, over-process what this could mean. Intuition is not an answer. Intuition is a guide. Intuition is not the final exclamation point. Intuition is the flow of the sentence. And if you let it enhance your journey instead of decide your journey, you're going to get very, very far with using your intuition. So when you get a message, whether you feel it, see it, hear it, comes through from guides, loved ones, your higher self source, doesn't matter how it works uniquely for you. However, it does work. Just say thank you and hold on to that. If you have to keep a little journal with you, keep a little journal with you. Okay. The second reason, which is kind of an offshoot of the first reason, the second reason intuitive information can end up being not correct or lead you in the wrong direction is your left brain can get in the way. Now, with the first example, the intuition that came through was correct. It came through naturally. You picked it up perfectly, but you stopped and you got all human on it and said, okay, I'm going to analyze this until I have an absolute answer. <laughs> That's the first reason. The second reason, however, even though it's a little bit similar, it's kind of different. When your left brain starts to interfere with the flow of intuition, the intuition will go from intuition to imagination without you even knowing. It's so subtle. Let me explain. The difference between imagination and intuition is about this big. It's really subtle. Imagination is like a push. You're creating something, whereas intuition is a pull. You're being told something. It's a very subtle difference. It flows through the same channels. It flows in the same direction and the same kind of feel. So it can be hard to tell it apart. Intuition is where you have no intent, 
no um, desired outcome, no analysis of it. It just comes through. And like I said earlier, you just say what you see, feel, and hear. But imagination has intent. Imagination, that push, has a desired outcome, intent, a want, uh, an analysis behind it. I think, maybe, what if? These are all left brain kind of concepts that come in. So normally, intuition will start to bubble up and flow. And the second it does, your left brain will pipe in and say, well, I think this. So like I said, it's very similar to the first one. But the difference between these is in the first one, the intuition came through, it was correct, and then you analyzed it. In this situation, intuition tried to come through, but because of the left brain, because of this analysis, this deep set you know, intent on the outcome, intuition ended up turning into imagination. So unless you can really let go of the outcome, really let go of your desires around it, your wants, your opinions, that's a big one. We have them. Don't act like you don't. <laughs> You've got your opinion, especially if you're like a parent that loves their kid or a best friend that loves their best friend. You have your opinion that you want the best for them. So you think this or you think that. I mean, it's human. It's very human. But once that human muddies that intuition, the intuition turns into imagination. It happens a lot and it's perfectly normal. And here's the fix for this one recognize your left brain okay it's like a little sibling sitting behind you going yeah well what about this yeah but what about this yeah but what about this and you didn't even know it was sitting behind you until someone said hey mm, your left brain's getting in the way the awareness of your left brain in that activity is huge it's a game changer it's huge okay now that you know that you can listen for it and you can say, mm, nope, I think my left brain got in the way on that one. I am going to get myself into a centered place where I don't analyze. I don't care about the outcome. I'm not worried about anything. I don't have strong intent and pure intuition can just come through and give me a message. That's, that's how you step into kind of calming that left brain and allowing the right brain intuition to flow normally. So to recap, the first reason intuition might not come out the way you think it was or the way you picked it up it might not come out you know exactly how you thought it was going to happen is because you got a pure piece of intuition it was accurate but then you had to apply it to something you analyzed it and you said okay this is exactly what it is here's the outcome put the period at the end of the sentence we're done the second reason is during the flow of intuition your left brain, that little murmur, murmur, right behind you, couldn't just couldn't stay, it couldn't stand it. It's like, no, oh, oh, I think it might be this, or it might be that. Or that. So, if we get a solid piece of int intuition that comes through perfectly, okay, and then we analyze it afterwards and we decide, okay, here's the reason it is, and this is what it is, that's where we can misguide ourselves into uh, uh, the wrong direction. But sometimes we can get intuition coming through, wanting to come through, and it starts to come through, and we analyze while it's coming through, and then it turns into imagination. This is very common when your heart is so attached to the outcome. And I, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. There are still going to be things in your life that you are so attached to that it's really hard to get that unbiased intuition to come through. Okay, the third reason you might have picked up something intuitively and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out. The third reason is that we are guided and we are not guided the way we want to be guided. Let's all just sit quiet with that for a second. And it's frustrating, I know but I'm not gonna be the one coming on here telling you everything's perfect and everything you want, you get. No, when you're aware of how this all rolls, then you can roll with it. We have guidance, we are guided. We have loved ones, we have spiritual guides, source, our higher self, and their job is to get us from A to B. And most often, A to B is what we want us here as humans here in this linear timeline our shielded selves a to b is what we want but sometimes we have to go to a to c to get to b 
or A to C to D to Q to F to P to Z to get to B. All right. Now we don't want to take those extra steps. We just want what we want. And we want, you know, our guides to tell us what we want. Oh, just tell me how to get to tell me how to get to B. That's how you get to be awesome. And you go run into B and it's not B. And you're like, not fair. Why would my guides or my higher self guide me in the wrong direction? They didn't. They didn't. They made sure that you were where you needed to be and heard what you needed to hear in the moment. There's a big difference between where we really need to get to and what we and what we need to have happen in order to get there. There's a big difference between that and the path that we want. Because the path that we want is typically the easy path. It's typically just get me from A to B. Just get me from A to B. It'll be fine. Give me some lemonade on the way, you know, a little bit of popcorn. It'll be fun and easy. But sometimes that's not that's not what we really, really need. And it's hard for us to say, no, no, what I really, really need is a tough lesson. <laughs> uh, I'm going to learn this tough lesson before I get to B. I'm starting at A. I got to learn a tough lesson. And then I got to get to B. So I got to get there and I'll get there when I get there. But I really need to learn this tough lesson in the middle. You don't hear us signing up for that. But here's the thing. Guides, loved ones, source. Those on the other side that are on the other side that is watching out for us. They love us unconditionally. Think of the most perfect, unconditionally loving parent. They want the absolute best for you and they know what's best for you. And you are going to eat peas and broccoli. It's going to happen because that's how you can be healthiest. And you might not want to eat peas and broccoli, but it really is the best thing for you as a growing child. So Think of those on the other side, not as your teammates that are giving you everything you want, but as your team who is making sure you experience everything you need to experience to have the most enhanced life, the most enhanced journey, to be able to feel the most bliss. This can be hard. And we can translate this sometimes as well. You know, I thought my guides, you know, were guiding me toward this, but they actually guided me over here. Not fair. It's only not fair because you didn't want to go there. But the guides knew you needed to go there in order to experience something. You will get where you want to get to, but you need to do a few things on the path that maybe you didn't sign up for or you didn't want. Think about a moment in your past where your first thought is, I don't ever want to go through that again. But then if you were to take some time and really embrace the awesomeness of you that came into being as a result of that lesson or as a result of that experience, because I'll tell you for me personally, it wasn't all rosy. (laughs) That's for sure. I had some difficult things to deal with like as a kid and you know, my 20s, et cetera, et cetera. Just in life, I had some difficult things to deal with, but I can sit here today and say, I'm here today and I'm the person that I am today. And I love who I am. And I love my life today because I went through those things. Now, you sit down, you pick up a piece of information intuitively, or you get a message from a guide or a sign, and it directs you in a particular direction. Is it that it was lying to you or misleading you, or is it that you just didn't want that direction? I mean, it can be that, and it's okay. It's okay to say, you know what? They guided me this way, but I didn't want that, right? Here's my favorite example. And if you've been following me, I'm sure you've heard this story. Bear with me. Here's my favorite example. I currently am a full time RVer. I love it. Got myself a big old RV, travel all over the country. I love it. I never knew how much I love to travel. I never knew how much new experiences were like a drug to me. Like I love seeing new things, meeting new people, going new places. And I get to do that constantly full-time RV. Now, I was raised in a city and I was not raised in in the country. I wasn't a camper or a, a you know wilderness type person at all. And years back, my guides came through and said to me, "You need to buy a liveaboard boat and move on to that." Now, 
I love boats. I love boats. I love the water. If I won the lottery, one of the first things I would get is a liveaboard catamaran and I would be down in the Caribbean. Let me tell you, I love that. So I thought, oh, yay, this is exciting. Wow, what a great adventure. I would love to do that. Now, mind you, at this time, there was no such thing. Camping? No. No way. RVing? No. I don't do that. I'm not a wilderness person. <laughs> but a, a big, huge, beautiful boat, I'll go on that all day long. The signs were so strong. The, they were so strong. I did a reading for a gentleman a couple days after getting this message from my guides. My guide said, we need you to buy a boat and live on that boat. I'm so excited. I can't stand it. A couple days later, gentleman comes in for a reading. We do a reading. He stands up to leave at the end of the reading and he says, oh, I almost forgot. I'm selling my catamaran. If you know anybody that's looking for a boat. I mean, the synchronicity there is huge. A couple days later, I'm walking through a bookstore and I love to do this. I love to just walk up and down an aisle and pick a book on a shelf and then just open it up and read the first sentence. I did that randomly for the fun of it. And the first sentence was, oh, the professional, you know, uh, moved out of his typical home in Iowa and moved on to a boat and lived in the Caribbean. I mean, the signs were ridiculously strong, right? So I pursued it. I tried to get a boat. Turns out didn't work. Every avenue I went down didn't work. And it wasn't until my girlfriend said, well, why don't you try RVing? It's kind of like small living and it's kind of a step toward it. And I was like, are you kidding me? RVing? I would never RV. You know, I had all these judgments around it. Right. And uh, I brought it up to the family. They were all like, let's try it. And I was like, all right, great. I fell in love with it. Absolutely love it. I just absolutely love it. And here I am today now traveling all over, waking up to sunsets in different areas and or sunrises and going to bed and sitting there watching the sunset. I mean, it's just, it's bliss. But if my guide came through originally and said to me, buy an RV, I would say, nope. Mm -mm. I would either say no to it, or I would decide that that wasn't really intuition coming through, or I wasn't picking it up accurately because it's not what I wanted, but I had to have the temptation for something that I really, really wanted in order to open up to a conversation with a friend that got me to try something that I had no idea I would be so passionate and love so dearly because there was no way you were going to get me to go right to RVing, but I had to go through that. So we can get really strong signs from our guides, from our guidance team, and they don't end up being what we thought they were going to be. Was it a lie? No. Was it wrong? No. It was what your guidance team told you in the moment. It was what you needed to hear in the moment to lead you toward that end goal that's going to bring you bliss. So three reasons today why you think your intuition might have lied to you. The first is you get a pure piece of intu intuition that comes through, you pick something up, and then after it comes through, you say, I have to figure this out completely. I need, a, I need to turn this piece of information into a solid answer. And that analysis can lead you into a different direction. The second reason is when intuition starts to come through, especially about something you care so deeply about. Your left brain can analyze it, your intent, your desired outcome can muddy the intuition and unfortunately can turn it into imagination during the flow. The third reason is sometimes your guidance team needs to put you in places that you didn't want to go, but in the end are going to get you to your highest and best state of bliss. So. Those are three reasons why you think, you know, my intuition might be off or intuition isn't right or, you know, did my intuition tell me off? Whatever that is, your intuition is accurate. It's always accurate. It's the human in us that can get in the way. If you've had this experience, I would love to hear about it. Share it in the comment section. Give me a two thumbs up. <laughs> tag a friend if they've had this happen where you've heard them say, you know, I can't trust my intuition. If you if you think you can't trust your intuition, this is the video for you. <laughs> and the next time it happens, take a moment to sit and think. 
Did I analyze it after it came through? Did I start to analyze it in the middle of it? Did I simply follow it and it didn't take me where I wanted to go, but maybe this is going to lead me into a bigger and better direction? These are the reasons and hang in there. With time, the, the clarity comes and the strength of intuition gets stronger and stronger and stronger until more often than not, you can hold yourself in that space of simply receiving, simply flowing, and knowing that your guides, your team, they've got your back. This is your moment.